Hi guys, welcome back, and hello if you are new, my name is Sarah, and I make lots of what's for dinner videos just like this one, and I also make lots of other lifestyle content on my channel. I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below and join our little family. I actually haven't made a what's for dinner video in quite a bit. This is the first one in a long time because life hit hard for the Banu crew, and if you've been following my channel, you know I know life has hit hard for pretty much everybody on the planet. 2020 has not been what we expected, but we are trying to get back in routine and just enjoy it and enjoy spending time with one another, which is what we we've been doing and trying to make good summer memories um, so I honestly haven't been super focused on filming lots of what's your dinner videos or cooking lots of extravagant foods not that I do that anyway um, but all of these uh, dinners are just cumulative over the past couple of weeks and months and so I hope you enjoy them this video is also a collab with my sweet friend here on YouTube. Her name is Stephanie and she's from Home Sweet Stephanie and she makes lots of what's her dinner videos and grocery hauls and her dinners are always so delicious. Her channel is amazing. I love how diverse her recipes are. You can find just about any style of food on there. They're super yummy. I've made multiple of her recipes and never been disappointed. I highly recommend you check her out. I will have her channel and Instagram and everything linked below. You will not be disappointed. She is amazing and makes such yummy yummy recipes. So without further ado, let's jump into the recipes that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. All right, the first recipe we have here is a creamy Parmesan garlic chicken. I got this recipe off of Pinterest and I'm just seasoning up some chicken breast right there. And I'm taking a cup of mozzarella cheese, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, um, a full cup of mayo. I love me some mayo, but I know it's not everybody's vibe, but let me tell you, you don't like taste mayo necessarily in this, if that makes any sense. And then um, some minced garlic. We're gonna stir that all up and get it nice and combined. And then we are gonna pop that on top of the chicken breast. Now, you really wanna get a nice thick coat of it um, so really it like bakes into the chicken as well as you can spread it um, really evenly and this is what it should look like not super appetizing right there but let me tell you when it comes out it looks delicious I'm taking some baby yellow potatoes and putting some olive oil seasoning them some salt and pepper and roasting them in the oven and this is how the chicken turned out oh my gosh guys let me tell you this is some of the best chicken I've ever had it was so moist so delicious the top became kind of like a nice crunchy skin in coating I, you will not be disappointed even my kids love this and gobbled it up and they are incredibly picky eaters right now I also served it alongside some zucchini that I just um, pan fried on my stove with just a little bit of olive oil and garlic and it was amazing by the way all the recipes will be linked below. Fourth of July I'm doing a makeshift um, dish <laughs> we're having barbecue and grilling and I was in charge of bringing a dish this is the kids' table. We have like zero counter space right now. So um, I made, these are called crack potatoes. Um, so I just took yellow potatoes, cubed them up, and then I took a half a stick of butter, also cubed that up, and I topped it with bacon bits. I'm putting this in the oven for about an hour until the um, potatoes are fork tender, and then we're gonna cover it with cheese and ranch dressing. Hopefully this is good, the review said it was. I also did season it with a little bit of kosher salt, black pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder mix it all together and we're about to put it in the oven. All right, so after um, the potatoes became fork tender, we added in the shredded sharp cheddar and then the Hidden Valley Ranch, which is what the recipe called for. Um, and you mix it together and popped it back in the oven until all the cheese was melted. To be honest, the two things that I would change is using homemade ranch. I think that would completely change the flavor and up the impact. And also use, um, or let the potatoes roast a little bit longer so they get a little bit more crunchy before adding in the cheese and the ranch. I think would have made a much bigger impact and would have been better, although these were still really good. We had them with hot dogs and homemade macaroni salad. Yes, I eat like a lot of ketchup, don't judge me. I also had some pickles on the side, but this was a really good side dish. My family loved it and I would just uh, recommend changing a couple of things and see how that tastes, And I, but I bet it would taste even better. Um, but it's a good side dish to bring to barbecues. We had our little entertainers right here doing our end of the night for, <laughs> for the jelly activities. This next recipe is a pasta recipe from my sweet friend here on YouTube as well. Her name's Julia and she's the sweetest, most kindest person ever. And she also has amazing ones for dinner videos. And she made a pasta recipe that sounded amazing. I just took a little bit of a spin on it. I added artichoke with artichoke oil. Um, she didn't have that, but I thought it sounded really good together. I then added sun-dried tomatoes and some garlic and just sauteed them up in a pan. I then also am boiling my penne pasta. 
um, and getting those nice and combined, the artichokes broke down from the heat and so they were a little bit smaller and the uh, tomatoes got a bit softer and the garlic cooked and it was smelling so good in my kitchen. <laughs> I then am going to go ahead and add my chicken broth once all those are cooked nicely and a whole uh, jar of traditional pasta sauce from Great Value. You guys know this is my favorite, super cheap, super delicious. So I added that whole jar. And then once that was up to a simmer, I added my mozzarella cheese. Once that was melted, I went ahead and added my half and half. You can use heavy cream. I believe that's what Julia used, but I had half and half on hand, so that's what I used. Um, and it was just as amazing, I'd imagine. It was nice and creamy. And then once that was all combined, I added a little bit of Parmesan cheese. This was super cheesy, super delicious. Julia actually added spinach, and that would be my only thing I'd change, is I would add a lot more veg next time, just to add a little bit of health to it. And a little bit more a little less cheese uh, flavor and just a bit more veg but this was amazing and delicious all right tonight we're making what my husband and I call New Year's nachos <laughs> I've made them on the channel before they're buffalo chicken nachos one time we made them for New Year's and it just stuck so we call them New Year's nachos now um, so I'll show you what I'm using I already showed you guys um, how I prepare the chicken this is great for if you never need trout chicken for anything this is my foolproof way it tastes amazing it's super moist it's not dry um, it's not overly chickeny flavored if you know what I'm talking about it's so good so I recommend that I'm waiting for my oven to preheat um, these are the best chips to use for nachos in my opinion um, because they have a hint of lime, so they add a little extra zestiness. They are so good, so we're having some of uh, the Tostitas hint of lime chips. And there goes my oven. Um, then we're having it with the mild wing sauce from Great Value once again. For me, this is the best wing sauce. It is super, super good, really inexpensive, and it's not intense, intense like buffalo sauce. It's kind of cut with almost like a ranch flavor. It's so good if you haven't tried it yet. It's from Walmart, like I said. And then normally I make my own ranch, but today we're going with just great old Hidden Value. Hidden Value, Hidden Valley. There's Ollie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hidden Valley. And then... Hi. <laughs> There's Ellie. And then, um, anyway, um, we have some sharp cheddar cheese to go with it. Whatever cheese floats your boat, you go with it. Um, I just happen to really like sharp cheddar. My friend made these, um, and she put some pinto beans on them. I thought I had pinto beans, but we have great northern beans, so I may try it. I may not. Who knows? But she said it's really good if you add some beans on top. So, that is New Year's nachos. I'm going to pop the chicken in for about 20, 25 minutes. There's two chicken breasts in there that are pretty thin. And then cook it and see how it looks. Um, and then we'll shred it up and I'll show you the rest. So yeah, let's get the chicken cooking. All right, so this is the chicken all nice and done. Of course, if you wanna like brown it up, you can kind of open the foil now and get a little brown on top. But it's super, super tender right now. As you can see, a lot of the moisture and liquids and juices kind of cook out. So that's great for um, the start of a sauce or broth or gravy what have you but it makes its own little chicken broth that you can save for later so anyway i'm gonna shred this all up um and then we are gonna go ahead and start the nachos so we got the chicken all shredded and i'm just gonna pop on some of the buffalo sauce mix it together and then we're gonna put the layer of chips down and cheese you'll see you'll see All right guys, so we're laying out the buffalo chicken. Look at that, all nice and shredded. And I know where it's headed. Where's it headed, Jeff? Straight to my belly. It's gonna jiggle like it's jelly. <laughs> thought I'd leave that little last song in there for you. Anyway, I'm just covering that layer of tortilla chips with that uh, chicken that we already put the sauce on and then I'm adding more sauce on top and then on top of that is where I'm placing our cheese and then on top of the cheese we are adding ranch. So these are super saucy and super delicious. There you have it. The best nachos you will ever eat. Of course, like I said, you go ahead and add some like pinto beans 
olives, if you want to throw in like vegetables, like maybe some celery, some fresh celery on it right now, or mix it up with different types of cheeses, like blue cheese, what have you. You can do whatever, but literally, literally, these are so good. And every single time we make them, we are never disappointed. <laughs> they are not healthy by any means, but you know what? It's my birthday weekend and we are stuck inside from quarantine, so we are just gonna enjoy what we got going on. <laughs> Having meatloaf at my mom's house tonight, and she's trying a new recipe, that's all she does. She never makes the same meatloaf ever again. She just continues to try new ones. I will have it linked below. It is, I will have this linked below, but it's from Cookpad Cheddar Chip Meatloaf. Um, and here are all the ingredients, but I will show you what we have right here. It's two and a half pounds of ground beef, some cheddar cheese, eggs, garlic powder, onion, ketchup for the sauce, balsamic vinegar for the sauce, ruffles, but they're the cheddar and sour cream ruffles, and that's what you use instead of crackers or breadcrumbs, and then some milk and then some seasoning, and um, brown sugar also for the sauce. But put this all together and show you and tell you how it turns out, and I will have it linked below. All right, to get started, we're taking those ruffles, the cheddar and sour cream, and we're smashing them up and getting them nice and crumbly. Um, and then once you do that, you're just gonna pop them in a bowl and basically make chip cereal. It is disgusting looking and um, it, it's really gross. But basically you wanna do this ahead of the time so the chips have enough time to kind of get soggy. Um, and look, you're making chip cereal. It, it was grossing me out when I was doing this. I don't know why I couldn't get my head around it. But anyway, you just want them to get all nice and soggy and mushy. Next, we're gonna take an onion and we're gonna quarter it um, because we're gonna put it in my mom's KitchenAid chopper. But if you don't have a chopper, you just really wanna finely dice the onions um, so this not overwhelmingly chunky for your meatloaf. Um, and But if you have this chopper, it's great. I will have it linked below. We got it from my mom for a gift and she loves it. And then you're just gonna saute up the onions. This looks like a lot of onions, but I promise you this cooks down quite a lot. Um, but I still don't think we use the whole entire thing. Next, we're gonna get started on the actual meatloaf and we are gonna take about two and a half pounds of ground beef, one, two, three eggs, and then we're gonna add in our shredded cheese on top of that, um, and then our chip cereal. See, look how soggy it got, um, so it's not so intensely crunchy. Um, and then we're gonna add some of the onions in. I would let them cool because this did burn my mother's hands because <laughs> she didn't let the onions cool because you are gonna combine them. But if you don't use your hands, then you know, don't worry about it. We're adding garlic uh, powder, salt, and pepper, and then we're combining. Like I said, it's best and easiest to use your hands when making meatloaf, but I know this looks probably disgusting, so I apologize, but um, we're just gonna combining that all up and squishing it all together, and then we're gonna form this cute little or not so cute meatloaf um, and pop it in the oven and get started on the sauce. So the sauce we're making um, is brown sugar, ketchup and um why can i not think of the balsamic vinegar man that took me a while to think of some balsamic vinegar and we're just gonna mix that up and stir it up and then halfway through or i guess just about a few minutes before um, the meatloaf is ready we're gonna put a little bit on top to kind of caramelize the top of the meatloaf and then we save um some for topping and it was really really good now this isn't a smaller pan than we normally use that's why it looks like there's so much grease but Granted, we're making a meatloaf. Like, how healthy are we really going? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next, we um, this is how we had it. We had it with some yummy, delicious mashed potatoes that I always use a special sauce with. And I'll share that with you in a second. And some fresh fruit. For the sauce, I just use some horseradish, a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of mayo, and some garlic powder and mix it together. I know that sounds crazy, but it's so good. And I love it on my mashed potatoes and my prime rib for Christmas. Next, we are gonna make a pasta, uh, a chicken pasta that I saw on Mandy in the Makings channel. And so I'm taking three chicken breasts and I am just putting some garlic salt and some pepper on top of them and popping them in way too much oil. My husband got a little crazy with the extra virgin um, olive oil, but we made it work and we're just gonna saute them up and um, cook them through. And I'm gonna have angel hair pasta with this. This is half length angel hair pasta. Didn't know they made that, but they do. And I love it and I probably never go back. I love how easy it is because I always um, break my pasta in half. 
Next, I'm just sauteing up some bacon, and then after both of those are cooked through, I'm gonna go ahead and cook in the exact same pan to make sure I get all the delicious flavor and bits. Um, and I've added some minced garlic with some chicken broth and a whole bottle of Caesar dressing. This is Kin's Caesar dressing. Uh, this is the best in my opinion, but you can use whatever one you have. Um, and we're just gonna mix that all up and get it all nice and combined and bring it up to a little bit of a simmer. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add a whole juice of a lemon of course, if I had the lemon squeezer, I would make this look very professional and pretty, but instead we are looking like a crazy mongrel and just squirting all in there. Um, then I'm using um, some fresh grated Parmesan and melting that together, and then we're going to toss in the noodles and get them completely covered in that sauce. And on top of that, we're going to add in our chicken and crumbled bacon and stir this all together. This was super delicious, super yummy. It was actually really rich and creamy, but still had a lightness to it because of the Caesar and because of the lemon. And we had it with a buffalo ranch salad on the side and some toast, Texas toast. And that'll be the end of this video made but full circle. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Stephanie and I will see you guys soon in my next video. Bye guys.